Hello and good Sunday one and all. Welcome to yet another edition of the Cliff Ellis Show. I'm your host, Brandon Dunn, along with Coastal Carolina men's basketball coach Cliff Ellis. Two at the HTC Center this past week with the Arkansas schools in town. Coach, you knew going into this week it was going to be tough because both Arkansas schools are playing well. Little Rock has been phenomenal yeah. despite losing two coming into this one. Again, those two teams are the ones to beat, as are the Georgia schools down the stretch. Well, there's no doubt about it that they're, they've made noise, and you got to give a lot of credit to these teams. And we were coming off of a great win in, in Texas mm -hmm. uh, that put us in position to really jump to first place. But with the turn of events this weekend, uh, you know, we put ourselves back. You know, those, those, we had a great win at South Alabama, great win uh, at, at Texas Arlington. And now we've kind of given those games back with the losses that we had this weekend. So uh, we haven't had a lot of practice time. And uh, this week we'll get back and see if we can't fix some things. All right, let's go into the highlights on Saturday between uh, CCU and Arkansas State. We'll get it going here early on. The Shauna Clears looking good early on. Tommy Burton showing why he's one of the best, especially in the paint, gets the bucket here. And then Keyshawn Bruton, who had a monster game, delivers with a nice little razzle-dazzle. And, Coach, you were out to an early lead. Well, we got out to an early lead, but uh, it's a long game, and, and we always want to get off to a good start. And uh, uh, when we do and get that early start, it sets a tone, but you got to keep this thing going. It seems like the first five minutes over the last two games hasn't necessarily been successful for you, and that's got to be disappointing because you are always five minutes in the first, five minutes in the second, and you got to win those to win right. games. Well, that's true. Uh, we did get out on uh, uh, Arkansas State 6 nothing, but after that, they made a comeback, and, and, and it was their game. We got off to a good start. We didn't sustain it. What was it about their miniature run that get the, they got them going, and then before you know it, that 6 nothing lead is now them up 8-6? to six. I thought their bench was a big key. Johnson coming off the bench and Willis coming off the bench. Those two guys made some big shots for them. Uh, we had a good game plan. Uh, those guys off the bench came in, and, and they knocked down shots, and I thought that it really gave – uh, Arkansas State a chance to, to do some good things. The Red Wolves would go up three, but Coastal bounces back and gets a couple of buckets, especially inside from Katinga, and then he delivers a little bit later on to help out your cause. But then after that, Coach, they go on a little bit of a run, and before you know it, they're up 19-12 with about eight and eight and some change to go. Yeah, we're getting in foul trouble, uh, Brandon, and, and it's, it's creating some strange lineups. Uh, there were a lot of fouls called in the first half, uh, both, both teams, and uh, we're having to substitute in and out, and it's really kind of uh, taken some of the some of, some of the sink out of us with regards to what we're wanting to accomplish. On the other side, some of your free throws were going down. It helped you out as you would claw back into this one, and then Tommy Burton comes up with a huge dunk, and that kind of got the crowd going. It pulled you within two, and then you go on a run to put you up by two on this Keyshawn Bruton three. Well, no, and, and Keyshawn's threes. I think Tommy Burton and Keyshawn, they were they were our offense today. They were they was they were certainly our offense. And and I thought that uh, uh, Tommy did. I mean, he got a double double. You can't ask more than what he did today. Devonte Jones is getting some looks. He did hit a bucket, a couple of buckets in this game, but for the most part, his shots aren't going down right now, Coach. Well, that's part of the game. You got to fight your way through it. You got to fight your way through it. But uh, teams are. Zeroing in on him, he's 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 known. People know what his moves are, and they're going to try to take it away. And uh, you just have to fight through it. Be patient. Bruton, have you seen him play this way since he's been in a coastal uniform? Clearly, a, a career high, but boy, he was just lights out. Well, I think in the early part, I think the Utah game and a couple of those games, we've seen it, and we certainly need it from him uh, because his shots are, are are pivotal for us right now. Coming down the stretch, bucket for bucket, each team going back and forth as we hit the break. Coach, you, uh, you're up by 240 to 38 and feeling pretty good as you hit the break uh, because the, the last, I'd say, 10 minutes or so was a productive half for you. Well, it was, and we were in foul trouble. So, you know, we go, we go in the locker room, and KB and Isaac have three fouls apiece. We can't start them to open the second half. And, you know, we're trying to just buy some time as we begin the second half and uh, be able to get those guys in and try to ride this thing out. A different lineup to start the second half, as Coach just alluded to, but it seemed to pay off. Garrett Green, nice three here, and then Caesar 
coming off the bench and playing well. He got the start of the second half because of the foul trouble. Right. I thought Tim did a good job uh, around the glass. I thought he did some good things. I think his size helps us. He's young. He's trying to figure it out. And obviously, uh, there's a lot of young guys on this team that are trying to figure it out, but they're being productive. And the guy that really was productive, Coach, and I know I keep mentioning it, uh, but it's Keyshawn Bruton because he just goes on a tear. He hit like three or four threes yeah. in a row. Uh, and then it seemed that he got a little mouthy, and the coaches kind of he kind of got it teed up there. And I, right. I saw you talking to him on the bench. What was your message to him after well, that? Well, you got to keep your composure, you know. And he says, well, they're talking to me. Well, you know, you can't – you can't uh, – you know, you can't dish out. Sometimes the, the second word is going to be the one that will get you. Watching it from the sideline, you could see them chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. And that 12-point lead, before you know it, bam, now it's down to single digits. And before you know that, now they're right back in the ballgame. Yep, there's no doubt about it. And they made some big shots. you got to give them credit to, for it. I thought that, once again, I thought Johnson and Willis, I thought those shots were big that they made towards the end. They would cut it to five with eight to go. Bruton hits a three and gives you back an eight-point lead. And at that point, you thought, well, okay, well, maybe things are kind of turning around, and then all of a sudden they go on another tear. Yep, and once again, that 30-9 to nine run is the game. You know, we talk about the first five minutes. You got to finish the last five minutes, too. And, uh, you know, we, we weren't able to close it out. What do you think has been the struggle from your bench? Uh, you got outscored in this game. Uh, 37 to 15 you got outscored in the game before that with Little Rock it just seems like the production has kind of faded a little bit yeah we're not getting what we were getting early I, I wish I had an answer for it because we've been getting it and uh, it's just one of those things where it didn't come this weekend and you got to have it I mean I agree with you bench has got to come through for you but it didn't it wasn't productive this weekend and it was for the other two teams and and that's where the the the, the the amount of victory or the size of the victory played its part is with their bench. Well, Coastal Carolina goes on to lose this one by 5, 80 to 75. Big night for Keyshawn Bruton as he poured in 32. That's a career high for that young man in a Coastal uniform. Had an opportunity to talk to him after the game to get his thoughts on kind of what went wrong and how Coastal can go moving forward. Well, we got to come together. We got to get our confidence back, and we got to be gym rats. This week, I know we got to get rest, but we need to get our shots up. Coach expressed that every day as much as he can, and it's all about us getting in here and working on our game, man. Coach Keyshawn hit it on the head. He said, you know what, and it's something you alluded to during your post game and what you said earlier in the show, practice time. And that's what he said. We haven't practiced. We need to practice. We need to get on the practice field, on the court, and we need to kind of figure out what's going on because right now we're not playing the way we know we're capable of playing. Well, I, we played nine games and very little practice. Uh, we played nine games and I don't know, in just a couple of weeks, basically. And so practice time has just been nil. And, uh, you know, but the other teams are going through it too. Mm -hmm. But we've got some young players and we got a lot of new players. And I think this is an adjustment for everybody. But, you know, now's the time to get back on the court. This will be the really the best practice time we've had since right after the Christmas break. So it's been about three weeks since we've had some good practice time. So hopefully we can work some of these kinks out. Let's go back to Bruton for a second before we go into a break. It seems the hole got bigger and bigger and bigger as the game goes. And you know when you're knocking those threes yeah. down, it does. Were, uh, was it fun to watch for you as it was for us as the fans just to watch his performance? Well, I thought that he was keeping us in the game. And, uh, you know, you want, you think every one of them is going to go in. But uh, – you know, it's, it's going to have to have some support. Uh, but Tommy gave him support, but we've got to get some support somewhere else. All right, so we're going to take a quick break. When we come back here on the Cliff L Show, we'll switch gears. We'll go back to earlier in the week when Little Rock was in town to take on Coastal Carolina. Well, those highlights in the Cliff L Show next when we roll on. We'll be right back. The Cliff L Show is brought to you by Waccamaw Land and Timber. At Logan's Roadhouse, we grill up sizzling Southern-inspired flavor using time-honored recipes we've collected and perfected over time. From the inviting aromas of our wood-fired grilled steaks to our delicious from scratch dishes with seasonings you can see, we know how to bring out food's true flavor. And when you pair our food with an ice-cold beer or our handcrafted Roadhouse tea, you'll understand why Logan's Roadhouse is much more than a restaurant. Come to where steak rules the road. Logan's Roadhouse. For more than 60 years, HTC has been delivering worldwide connections from right here in our community. A community our employees are proud to support in every way, from coaching Little League sports to local fundraisers and quarterly blood drives. 
We sponsor and support the community and our school systems, recognizing greatness along the way. It's a commitment we take seriously, all to strengthen the connections here in our community. HTC, this is life. Connect with it. Buckamon Land and Timber has been serving the Grand Strand since 1982. The ultimate goal of Waccamaw Land and Timber is the best interest of both the buyer and the seller. If you're looking for a place to relax, hunt, or fish, the professionals at Waccamaw Land and Timber can find you the perfect recreational property. Call 449-0441 to discuss your real estate needs with Waccamaw Land and Timber. For us, nice is more than a smiling face. NICE is competitive interest rates and cashback benefits with a rewards checking program. Visit a Crestcom Bank location or apply online today. Crestcom Bank. Have a nice bank. The Cliff Ellis Show is brought to you by the Britain Law Firm. Welcome back here to the show. Coach and I are breaking down the week that was. We're going back to Thursday talking about Little Rock, a team that came into the HTC Center red hot, but did lose their last two, but still sitting at the very top of this conference and an opportunity for your club to knock those guys off, pick up a big win. Well, it was an opportunity and it was a missed opportunity, but you got to give Little Rock a lot of credit. They had one player that was really the game changer, and that was Root Money on. He got, uh, I think, 15 rebounds. He was long. He blocked seven shots. And as we watched film, he altered about eight others. So that's 15 attempts that you have at the basket that I think we just took it in there too close to him. And mm -hmm. I think that that was the fault of us. And, you know, we'd come off of a, a very good win, and all of a sudden we're in shock. And I think that shock carried over. Boom. You know, we think we're fixing a roll. It doesn't happen, and I think it even carried over to Saturday. All right, let's go on these highlights between Coastal Carolina and Little Rock as we get things going here from Thursday night action. And this one back and forth, Coach, a little bit early on. A couple of buckets by uh, Tommy Burton helping out the cause. Of course, DJ doing it as well. You would get out to an early lead, and things looked good early on until we hit about the 15-minute mark, and then all of a sudden Little Rock goes on a tear, and they score five in a row, and they're up 11-4. to four. Yeah, they got off on us. I, I thought that really and truly that they stayed the course the first five five minutes of, of, of each half. And uh, once again, I think we challenged them a little too much uh, trying to make a play inside against the trees. And that was, that, that hurt. They clearly won the first five minutes and coach, they probably won the next five minutes too because going into that final 10 minutes, they were up by nine and then they were up by nine again. And it just seems like your team was struggling to try to figure out the length of this team and try to figure out exactly how to attack this team. Yeah, well, we knew how to attack, we just didn't do it. Uh, we didn't follow what we needed to do. And in a game like that, when you take it inside, you want to get it to the paint. I mean, the closer you are to the basket, something's got to give. And we try to take anything that's easy, but if it's not there, you got to utilize your kickouts. We hit the eight minute mark. You had an opportunity to get uh, the uh, double digit lead down to single digits. You did it twice. Tommy Burton helps out the cause with this bucket. And then Keyshawn Bruton comes back a little bit later on at the 740 mark and hits a bucket. And it's an eight point game. So what was a 14 point game is now single digits. Well, and we've got a chance. We've cut it, we've cut it down and now we, we need to make a run. But you got to give Little Rock credit. Every time we tried to make a run, they would thwart it. And so, uh, uh, th those guys really made plays when they needed to. When you look at your team and the shot selections they're getting, which are good shots, and they're just not falling, as a coach, that's just got to be like, you know, what do I need to do? Well, that, that's right. I mean, you just have to make plays. I mean, you just got to find a way to do it. And those that make the plays, they're going to win the games. And uh, uh, we've got to get out on the practice court, get some shots up, and, and try to get this rectified. As we go into the half, uh, disappointing first half for uh, Coastal Carolina as you see Coach Ellis going off the floor with his team trailing by 13. The message at half had to be pretty clear. Stay the course of what the game plan is because you guys aren't doing what we told you guys to do. Or at least that's what I was hearing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think in the second half we tried to attempt it and, and we did and we cut it back. Uh, but again, when we did get it, by that time when you get behind, I think sometimes you start pressing with your shot and you gotta, you know, it's gotta be loose and it's gotta be confident. 
We start the second half here, Coach. The first five minutes going to Little Rock as that, I would say, balloons a little bit, their their confidence level yes. and, of course, the score as well because it got back to 14 before you guys were able to get it back to single digits. And when you did, it was uh, the free throw shooting. Yes, um, and, and that's a big part of, of everything. And we've had nights where we've just knocked everything down, but the ball just didn't go. I mean, what did we score, 55 points? Mm -hmm. uh, the ball wasn't going in the hole anywhere. And it just seemed like every time you guys would punch, they would counter punch and then counter punch you again. And it just seems like you couldn't quite get over the hump of getting it to where at least the first put 10 pressure. minutes, put pressure on them yeah. to, to kind of get back in this game. We never put pressure on them, and uh, they, they stayed confident, and you've got to be able to do that. I mean, you've got to be able to manage that. As a coaching staff, when you're calling timeouts and you're watching these guys battle and you know that they're trying their best and the ball's not going in the hole, how do you keep these guys positive when they can see that the results aren't there? Well, you have to keep fighting. I mean, this is, this is, what, this is what we do. And... You know, you can, you know, you, you, you make choices and decisions about what you're going to do or not going to do. And sometimes you know what you're supposed to do, but sometimes you just say, well, I don't know if I'm going to do this. Well, are you going to do it or not? Mm -hmm. uh, because that what it, that's what it gets down to. Now that's, that's in basketball, that's in life. So we try to get our guys, hey, do the little things, have discipline, do the little things, and then things will correct itself. As the second half came to a close and you're winding it down, their lead got up to 20. At that point, it was 67-47. And you could just yeah. sense that uh, it, it was, it was going to be that kind of night for your basketball team. You haven't had many of those, nope. but that was the kind of night it was. No, nope. and then we had back-to-back -back games that carried over. And sometimes I've seen that happen before. You have to find a way to come out of that. But there's no question that Little Rock dominated the game Thursday night. And they would go on to win this one, 71-55. Uh, to 55. Coach, your bench outscored 23-10. to 10. That was the first of two games that your bench has been outscored. We talked about that uh, in the game against uh, Arkansas State. But turnover, second half points, points in the paint. Um, just really didn't go your way. And I think you, were, you hit, what, 23% from the floor in the first half? Yeah, it was tough. The ball didn't go in the hole, and we didn't do the things that we needed to do. And, uh, you know, we shot, I think, 18 more field field goal attempts than they did. We out rebounded them. We had less turnovers, uh, but we didn't make shots. All right, we caught up with a couple of players after this game to get their thoughts on uh, how this one went and just kind of what they needed to do to move forward. We just couldn't get over that hump. And um, I, like I said, I just feel like our energy level wasn't there. Um, I feel like we wasn't moving the ball like we should. And uh, it just something we got to come back together, go back to the drawing board. Well, Coach, uh, not much more we can say about the game against Little Rock. I guess your final thoughts. Well, they beat us. And uh, you got to give them credit. I think that they have separated themselves to show that they're one of the better teams in the league. They're so long. Mm -hmm. And uh, we get another shot at them. It's going to be at their place. And hopefully that we can come back, learn from this, and, and give them a better match. I guess what have you learned from your team over the last two games um, that makes you think, okay, well, these guys still have the fight in them. They still know it's just been a difficult two-game two, two, uh, two game stretch. Well, I know that these are good kids, and I know that kids, young kids, are fragile. And uh, you just got to teach them lessons of life. I mean, you've got to be able to pull your bootstraps up, mm -hmm. lace your boots up, and, and get back in it and dig in and try to get better. Well, you clearly see that there's no disappointment in this team, that the guys are still – Understand that there's a lot of basketball left to be played. You guys can go on a roll, and if you go on a roll and some of those teams don't, your boy, you're right back right. in the mix. That's right. There's a lot of basketball to be played, and, you know, we got a lot of games to play, and, and, and we got to focus on getting better. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll switch gears. We're going to talk about Tyrell Gums Freighter and what he means to this basketball team. That's coming up when we roll on, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. The Cliff Ellis Show is brought to you by Yellowwood Pressure Treated Pine. Locals love Creek Rats for lunch. They say it's the fresh salads, fantastic wraps, and seafood baskets. But when you experience those incredible waterfront views, you get that relaxed Creek Rats attitude. Waterfront on the Marsh Walk in Merle's Inlet. Another trial, another battle. Where's your strength? Tenacity. What's your history? Fighting for my clients in court. But what sustains me now is working with three of the finest individuals I've ever known. My family. 
There's power in family, power for our clients. Fighting for your rights is my family's business. Britain Law, born to fight, bred to win. At its heart, above all else, A&I has had a long-standing commitment to the community. Our driving force is our dedication to the people we serve. From Myrtle Beach to Florence. Wilmington to Charleston. Every job is different and every community is unique. No matter what disaster has brought us to you. It's our commitment that will keep us here. We're proud to be celebrating 40 years of service to the Carolinas. And we're looking forward to 40 more. For us, NICE is more than a smiling face. NICE is competitive interest rates and cash back benefits with a rewards checking program. Visit a Crestcom Bank location or apply online today. Crestcom Bank, have a nice bank. The Cliff Hello Show is brought to you by HTC. Hope your Sunday is going well. Welcome back to the Cliff Ellis Show. Coach, let's talk about uh, one of your uh, seniors and Tyrell Gums Freighter. What I've sensed from him this year, now granted the last couple of weeks, he's been struggling a tad bit. That happens in basketball. Sometimes a shot doesn't go in. But what his progression has been from last year to this year mm -hmm. has been pretty fun to watch. Well, he's, he's made some big shots for us over the last three years. And uh, he's really improved as a player. His defense has gotten better. He's got length. That he makes shots, and you know, right now he's going through a little struggle, but he'll he, he'll come around because that's what he does, and we've got all the confidence in Ty that he's going to finish this year up strong. How fun is it to know that the guy that's one of the best shooting threes in the conference is on your roster? Well, uh, he's uh, it, it's a good thing to have. Now, what we got to focus on is now that we're in league play. You know, those numbers are going down because they know him. So we got to be a little bit more patient. Uh, but we know that if he gets an open look, there's nobody on the team that, that doesn't want him to shoot the ball. All right, here's more on Tyrell Gums Freighter. I have a good uh, good coaching, coaches that I met in the past that, that worked me in my off season. So I try to take it very serious, get my stamina up, and uh, obviously do what I do best, shoot. And I'll work on my, my moves, crossovers, getting to the rim, stuff like that. And that extra work has paid off for this Ontario native. His improvement has been noticeably different for head coach Cliff Ellis. The expectations for him this year are higher uh, because of the losses from last year's team. Uh, but he brings, that, he brings that ability to be able to score. And he's long. He rebounds. He's got length for his defense. And uh, he's a senior. Uh, he's been here several years, and, you know, it's his time. As a senior, Gums Freighter has been looked upon to be more vocal, to be that senior leader to help this team win and challenge for a Sun Belt title. I know a lot about our system. In order for me to lead and be a senior, I got to be more vocal and also, like, include my teammates with it. So I, I try to take that with me carry on to the season. The future is bright for this Sean Eclair. He'll get a chance to play professionally at some level. It's something Ellis echoed when asked about what the future holds for this guard. You know, as, as far as what level in the professional he can play, but with his shooting ability, he certainly can play somewhere. For now, Tyrell will focus on getting better and back on track as he's been in a slump. But there's no doubt he'll get rolling soon as he continues his final year at CCU. The good thing and the fun thing about Tyrell is he's a really kind of like go lucky kind of guy. He seems to have a good time, uh, loves the game of basketball, loves being a Shauna Clear, and loves playing for you and all that you could see in that story there. I'm just waiting to see when he turns the corner and starts nailing some threes. And as you said, it's going to come. It, well, he's, been, he's done it. It's just been a struggle here the last few games. But uh, as long as he plays defense, I think that'll open up things for him. And uh, we want him to finish his career out strong and, you know, use those screens, run the floor, do everything that he can to be open to get that shot. Has he come to you and talked to you about the struggle and, and what he's going through right now? Because I know sitting on the bench and watching the game and kind of saying, waiting his turn, and hmm. that's not really, that that's really hasn't been his game the last couple of years because he seems to have been on the floor a lot. Well, you know, he's played a role here, and, you know, we talk about it casually. There's no coming in, talking asking questions with regards to it. He knows what he needs to do. Mm -hmm. He knows what his role is, needs to understand it. And, you know, he's just had a couple of tough games. He'll be back. When you look at him and being a senior, 
it, it must have been and it has been a joy for you to have him on your basketball team. There's no doubt about it. He's a great young man. Uh, he's, he's focused. Uh, he's one of the better shooters that I've ever coached. All right, so we're going to take another quick break. When we come back, we're going to wrap up the show. We'll talk about the week ahead. Just one game on the schedule for Coastal Carolina. It's the last of three at the HTC Center on this three-game homestand. We'll be right back. The Cliff Ello Show is brought to you by Crestcom Bank. Locals love Creek Rats for dinner. They rave about the nightly specials and how much they enjoy the live music. But when you experience that incredible waterfront view, you get that relaxed Creek Rats attitude. Waterfront on the Marsh Walk in Merle's Inlet. For more than 60 years, HTC has been delivering worldwide connections from right here in our community. A community our employees are proud to support in every way. From coaching Little League sports to local fundraisers and quarterly blood drives. We sponsor and support the community and our school systems, recognizing greatness along the way. It's a commitment we take seriously, all to strengthen the connections here in our community. HTC, this is life. Connect with it. At Logan's Roadhouse, we grill up sizzling Southern-inspired flavor using time-honored recipes we've collected and perfected over time. From the inviting aromas of our wood-fired grilled steaks to our delicious from scratch dishes with seasonings you can see, we know how to bring out food's true flavor. And when you pair our food with an ice-cold beer or our handcrafted Roadhouse tea, you'll understand why Logan's Roadhouse is much more than a restaurant. Come to where steak rules the road. Logan's Roadhouse. Buckham on Land and Timber has been serving the Grand Strand since 1982. The ultimate goal of Waccamaw Land and Timber is the best interest of both the buyer and the seller. If you're looking for a place to relax, hunt, or fish, the professionals at Waccamaw Land and Timber can find you the perfect recreational property. Call 449-0441 to discuss your real estate needs with Waccamaw Land and Timber. The Cliff Ello Show is brought to you by a &I Fire and Water Restoration. Welcome back here, Coach. You got one game on the slate this week, which actually is a good thing for your team because you said we need to get back on the practice floor, we need to get a little bit healthy, and you got those opportunities with just one game yeah, next Saturday. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we haven't had much practice, as I alluded to earlier. Uh, we haven't been able to, so now we can get some shots up, work on our ball handling, see if we can't get some of these turnovers out, uh, get our legs under us a little bit, and come back and get ready for Appalachia State. Let's talk about Levi for a second. He's hurt right now, but I talked to him before uh, the game against Arkansas State. Said he's feeling a lot better. Feels like he'll be ready to go against App. Yeah, it, it was a hamstring uh, injury and quad and stuff like that. It takes time, and uh, I think next week he'll be ready to go. What do you think the biggest concern is this week from a not just a health standpoint, but just trying to get some of these guys rested because it's been a long stretch? Well, I, we've got a chance to do that, uh, but we also need to practice. We need to we'll take Sunday off. We'll go Monday and Tuesday. We'll give them Wednesday off mm -hmm. and then we'll finish it up Thursday and Friday, play Saturday and be ready to roll because that's the first half of the season. And then we take on the second half. All right. Well, you conclude the first half with a uh, Final home game of a three-game stretch. Obviously, the first two with the Arkansas schools didn't go your way, but now you got App State coming in, and they always seem to have some trees as well. They always well, seem to be pretty lengthy as it's well. It's always a tough game, and, and they've got all those guards back that were there last year. Williams, they've got Forrest. You know, they've got Johnson back inside, Seacat. They've got a veteran team, and uh, it's always a tough match when you play App State, always. All right, well, we're going to be back next Sunday with those highlights from App State. We're also going to do more feature work, and we're going to sit down with Warren Gillis as he's with Coach Now and the coaching staff after a career here at Coastal Carolina, which was phenomenal. We're going to hear from him, too, as well. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll see you next Sunday here on The Cliff Ellis Show. The Cliff Ellis Show is brought to you by Yellowwood Pressure Treated Pine. Locals love Creek Rats for lunch. They say it's the fresh salads, fantastic wraps, and seafood baskets. But when you experience those incredible waterfront views, you get that relaxed Creek Rats attitude. Waterfront on the Marsh Walk in Merle's Inlet. <laughs>